Excuse me, Eric, where are you going right now? I'm sorry, an emergency has come up, so I have to go. An emergency? How could anything be more important than our wedding? There are so many of our friends and family here right now to celebrate you and I getting married today. What kind of reason could you have that would make it right for you to leave our wedding now? My ex-girlfriend is struggling with a really bad fever right now, and she needs my help. We're going to have to postpone the wedding for right now. And then when I get back from her side, we can continue on with it. You're kidding me. We're in the middle of our wedding, yet you'd rather be by your ex's side? I don't have a choice right now because she's a real mess with that fever. And when you say your ex-girlfriend, are you talking about Skylar? Ah, so you know who I've been talking about. Now that I think about it, you and her used to be friends with one another back in the day, right? That's right. And that's the exact reason why I don't want you going to her right now. Or are you saying that she is more important than your bride? Don't say such grudge-ridden crap like that. I'm just a nice guy that will not leave those in trouble without any help. I wish you'd be more happy with the fact that you're getting a husband as thoughtful as me. The only person you're that thoughtful towards is her, though. And wait, how the heck do you know about her having a fever right now and not doing well? She sent me a text saying she's not doing too well. So you're telling me you've been looking at your phone during the middle of our wedding? I'm asking you to please come back here so that we can get this wedding back on the road. Come back here right now, Eric! Shut up already, Hallie. Right now, Skylar's a mess due to that horrible fever. If I don't go to her right now to be by her side and that fever gets worse, causing her to go into a life-threatening state, what do you think will happen to her? Who will be there to take her to the hospital then and keep her from dying? How about you stay here and spend the most special day of your life with me and have someone else go take care of her? You don't have to go. <sighs> I never thought you were that heartless towards other people who've never wronged you. Just shut up and keep everyone here until I'm able to come back. I want you to entertain everyone in a way where they won't get upset over me having to postpone things there. <laughs> so you are really going to leave then? Eric! God damn it, Eric! Hallie, why were things just postponed like that all of a sudden? Eric didn't even say a word to anyone before he just stood up from his seat and ran out of the room. Did something bad happen that none of us are aware of? Dad, actually Eric, he's going over to his ex's place. His ex-girlfriend's place while he's in the middle of having his wedding? And to make things worse, it's Skylar's place that he's going to. Skylar, is she that girl who was in the same grade as you all throughout high school? That's her. What is going on here? Not only are both of the families all gathered here today, but clients and partners from work, leaders, employees, all sorts of very important people. What was Eric thinking doing something like that? I have no clue, Dad. I was trying to understand what he was thinking by asking him to explain things to me, but now he's not even replying to my texts. I'm sorry. I didn't want this sort of thing to happen to you. No, I'm sorry for you, Dad. I understand that Eric has always been a problem for so many people to have to take responsibility for. But when something like this happens, you'd think he'd at least have the common sense not to leave. I trusted that he loved me enough not to do this. Maybe it was a mistake to trust in someone with a history like him? You and I were both aware that there were things that are wrong with the kid, right? I I know that, Dad. You're right. Ever since I started going out with Eric, he's always been staying in touch with Skylar like they'd never even broken up. And there was that one time that he and I got into a fight over that. In the end, I told him to never ever talk with her again. Yet, ugh. Him not listening to me makes it feel as though I've been stabbed in the back now. Uh, that's because you've been stabbed in the back by him. But it was bound to happen with him. Now that the groom is no longer around, there's no point in wasting everyone's time by holding them here. Hallie, when you get a response from Eric again, you let him know that the families are waiting on him. I have an idea for what to do about him. 
can do. Eric, even if it's just for a few seconds, could you please shoot me a reply? Shut up already. Skylar just fell asleep and I don't want my phone going off and waking her up. If you keep calling and texting me, I'm going to have to block you. I don't care about Skylar right now. When do you think you'll be able to make it back to the wedding? Huh? Oh, that's right, the wedding. Uh, I haven't really made up my mind yet, but I'd like to spend a little bit more time watching over her to make sure she's all right before I go back. How much longer do you plan on keeping everyone here waiting? You can't expect all of our guests to just sit here waiting for you to finish up doing something that has no relation to all of us, right? If we're going to be charged for holding the wedding for longer than planned, could you go ahead and pay the fee? I had to come all the way out here to take care of someone with a life-threatening sickness. Why the heck aren't you listening to anything I'm saying, Eric? Is Skylar really that important of a person to you still? She's your ex-girlfriend, man, and shouldn't mean much at all to you anymore. And you know that her and I aren't close to one another, so you should respect that fact and stay away from her. I have told you plenty of times before to stop meeting and talking to her, right? And all of those times you've told me that you'd never go near her again. Yet, Eric, you chose the worst day to break that one promise you made to me. Our wedding day, and in the middle of our wedding at that. And about all of that, Hallie, I know that you've told me before about how you and her don't get along all that much now, but Skylar told me that's just not the case. So does that mean you're jealous of the fact that I'm giving her some of my attention still? I just knew that you plain girls always get so worked up over men like us wanting to meet with prettier women. So you're not even going to trust what I've told you? When speaking of who I've known longer, that would be Skylar, right? Now, back to the wedding. It's not canceled, just delayed a little, all right? I don't care how long it takes for me to get back there. You don't let a single guest leave. Then we'll all just continue waiting. So you're finally going to listen to something that I've said? If you'd just done that for me from the start, then we wouldn't have to be sitting here getting all upset. We'll all be waiting with excitement for you to come back here, Eric. Sorry that everyone's going to have to wait on me. Uh, how about you ask around and see if anyone there can do a magic show or something to entertain everyone? <laughs> Hallie, what the hell did you think you were doing? Because of you on my biggest day, I had to be embarrassed? I'm not sure why you blame me for natural responses that would have come from anyone who had to be forced to wait as long as everyone here did. Huh? How is any of that a natural response? I have all of my friends and colleagues here. Yet when I came back to get back to having my wedding, I get told that I'm fired? Are you guys all heartless monsters or something? You want to know why that had to happen in front of everyone here? Because you didn't seem to understand your position at all today, no matter how much I warned you. I really don't want to say this, but I'm going to have to. Don't forget that my family's company is the company that picked you up off the ground when you had nowhere left to go. Yet today you somehow forgot that fact entirely and left this wedding to go be with your ex leaving everyone here waiting. What is wrong with you, Eric? Wait, that's why you should have stepped in and told all of your family not to worry about what I was doing. You're my wife after all and your job is to make me look good and help out. There are a lot of things I can do to help make you look good, but lying about my own feelings to make you look like a decent human being is not one of them. Also, how should I explain to everyone that my husband went and left our wedding today to be with his ex-girlfriend without looking like a complete tool? Everyone who heard about that looked at me like I was insane. So you want to know why family no longer wants you working for them? Because you are nothing but a problem child that not even we could manage to take care of. Huh? You have no idea the kinds of things I did for your family's company, so don't you dare talk to me like you know better. Eric, you have always loved belittling the hell out of me, and after today I know that those kinds of hurtful words will never stop coming from you. The only reason I put up with all your crap for as long as I have is because of one thing, Eric. 
Ever since your family's business that they tried to run started to go under, my family has been very interested in it. The idea that I gave was by marrying you and creating a relationship between my family and yours, they would be able to buy your parents' business and make it a part of theirs. That would have been a win-win situation for all involved. But if we don't end up staying together, those talks will all vanish. What? Huh? What kind of a boring joke is that? You think what I just said was a joke? If anything, what you did to all of us today should have been a joke. You leaving us all here to wait for hours over your ex pissed everyone here off. Did you really go and tell everyone here about why I had to leave the wedding for a little bit? Of course I flippin' did, Eric. I made sure everyone knew about how you left this wedding to go be by the side of your ex because they deserved to know. You just thought everyone would have been okay with being left in the dark on having to wait hours when nothing happened? And your job was to make up some kind of a lie that would have satisfied them all. Now you've just gone and made me look like some kind of jackass in front of everyone. Well, what you did was something that nobody in their right mind would do on their wedding day. And the fact that you wanted me to lie to everyone about it goes to show that even you knew what you were doing was screwed up. Honestly, all you had to do today was stay here with all of us and enjoy your wedding and our marriage. That's all anyone was asking for, yet you couldn't even do the most simple and sensical thing. So don't you dare blame me for any of this when all of it is on you. God damn it, right now is fine. You go and talk with your parents and family right now and tell them that you and I are still going to have this wedding and get married. Also, you tell them to take back what they said about firing me. I have no reason in my mind for doing something like that now. Thank God this all unfolded before we handed in our papers to the courthouse. If you're not going to go and talk with all of them, then I will, and I'll make sure your dad listens to me. I know that your dad, of all people, actually has a brain cell or two left in his head and preferred me over anyone else in the company. And if I really have to, I'll save my job and have you kicked out of your own family. And then your dad can adopt me and I'll take your place. Now you're just talking like you've completely lost it. I hope you're shaking in your shoes right now, thinking about what I'll do. <laughs> Dad! I heard from your daughter what all happened. She wants to have this wedding ended and our marriage taken back. That all has to be some kind of a sick joke, right? It's surprising that a child of your standards would be able to talk to me as though I was still going to become your father-in-law. After having completely ruined my daughter's wedding today, you'd have been better off avoiding me. If you're really the man that took me into your company and praised me like you had, then that means you know I'm a far better man than whatever anyone else here believes, right? I can only wish for a better man to take your place now, because as far as I'm aware, no man would ever leave his own wedding to go and meet with his ex-girlfriend, no matter what the reasoning. Also, based off what Hallie has said about you already, she's told you three separate times not to talk or visit that ex anymore, correct? I'm really not sure what makes you think that I ever liked you enough to allow you to behave in that disgusting and shameless manner. But I think ending this wedding and the marriage between you both is the right choice. <sighs> Understood. Then, Dad, I want to ask you something. Would you mind becoming my real father instead of always being Hallie's father? What?! If this marriage between Hallie and I won't be happening, then I'd like for you to make me a part of your family through adoption. And then you can take back what was said about me being fired. I promise that I'll never make any one of you regret that decision, and I'll be the hardest working man you've ever seen. You're lucky you didn't just say that to my face, or else you'd be getting a knuckle sandwich like no other. I blame myself partially for never being able to tell what kind of vile filth you are. Back when Hallie first brought you home to see us, I should have been a bit more forward about how I didn't want her dating you. 
hey, hey, come on now. Uh, now you're just making it sound like you were always against me dating your daughter. Correct. And that's because I always have been. At the start, I was extremely against her dating you, and even told her that if she really wanted to marry you, she'd be on her own. Huh? What man wouldn't be saying that to their daughter when they've had a look at you? Sure, back when she brought you to the house for the first time, you came in a nice suit and were very respectful to all of us. You did a great job making it look like you were a well-put-together gentleman. But after having a glance at what you were hiding behind that facade, I knew. Any time we were not in the same room as you, and it was just you and my daughter, you were on your phone and never conversed with her. And th that w was because, um, you are very much right about that observation. And when she'd have something important that she wanted to talk with you about, all you did was sit there staring at that damn phone of yours. That's when I really started to think about how you weren't really into being with my daughter, especially not with the goal of marrying her. No respectable father would want their daughter going to a man like you, Eric. And that is why, after you went home and it was just Hallie with her mother and I, I told her to rethink things. But no matter what I told her, she said that she was fine with the way you behaved then. You stabbed the both of us in the back, you asshole. And you have the wrong idea about all of that. Back then, the only reason I was on my phone so much, uh, not listening to Hallie, was because one of my family members was very sick. The timing of that was all horrible, and I had to stay in touch with them because I was worried. Sorry to break this to you, Eric, but I know far more about your family than most people do, including you, even. So I would cut it out with those pathetic and baseless lies right now. What the hell? If you already know everything about them and why I was on my phone all the time, then why ask? Now you're just toying with me and wasting my time. Are you really in a place where you should feel comfortable complaining about what I'm doing, boy? You had been looking at your phone all day today, even before you had to leave to go and see your sick ex. I'm going to assume that all of that time spent staring at your phone instead of acknowledging your guests was because your ex was texting you? Someone with standards as low as you is not worth keeping in our company nor our family anymore. What the hell? You're not even my real father anyway, so I don't have to sit around listening to this crap. Who gives a damn, honestly? There are plenty of other companies out there that would love to have me in their ranks. I don't need to stay in your guys' lame company anyway. I'll go out and find another company that I find suitable for me and climb my way up there before coming back to you guys and crushing your company. What are you rambling on about, boy? Did you not notice that at today's wedding there were plenty of partners and customers to my company? Not a single one of them whom I've conversed with so far has said they'd love to have a backstabbing child like you in their company. Especially when all he'll do is call off all the time to go and be with his ex-girlfriend. If you really want to be worth something to any of those companies, you will have to start by growing up and being respectful to others. What? I want you to understand that you'll never find a job in this line of work ever again. What did you say? Then what's going to happen with me if I can't find a job in this field anymore? What am I going to do then? Are you really saying that I won't only lose my chance at getting a wife, but I'll also have trouble finding another job? You all are monsters. Absolute abominations to man. This is all happening because you chose to go against my family's trust we had placed in you. All I freaking did was go to my ex-girlfriend's place, that's all. Why does all of this have to happen now because of that? The fact that you can't even realize what you did was wrong is the root of your problems. 
Are we done here? I happen to have a company to attend to, as well as an upset daughter, which means all the time I had for caring about soft little boys is up! You and I will never meet or talk to one another ever again after today. And don't ever come around my daughter again. Damn it! This was not supposed to be happening to me. I haven't done anything wrong. <laughs> hey! Because of you, my whole life is being screwed up. Because of what happened at the wedding, both of my parents are forcing me away, and I was told by your dad that I will never be able to find another job in this field ever again. I seriously cannot believe this is happening to me. How the hell are you going to take responsibility for all of this? By not taking any responsibility for what you've done, fair and square, really. I did not cause your downfall, therefore I will not be the one to take the blame for it either. Although I would gladly take credit for it if that meant you shutting your stinking mouth. Didn't you ever think me warning you not to leave the wedding was me actually warning you? Yet you still chose your ex over me and that showed everyone the kind of child you really are deep down. So next time you want to start blaming me for what's happened here, just remember that I warned you about all of this. Shut up with your far-fetched logic! Are you really saying that you're happy about the fact that I might end up a piece of trash in this society now? Actually, I look forward to seeing you on the streets really soon. You... you're a bitch! Don't start yelling at me now. One call to the police about you yelling at a stranger like that and they'll be coming out to talk with you. Remember, you chose Skylar over me, so we're strangers to one another now. So much so that I forgot about what it felt like to love you. Actually, my love for you had slowly been washing away, but after yesterday, it's like there was never a flame to begin with. What the frick? Do you really hate the fact that I've been with Skylar a few times that much? You think it's okay for you to hate people like that for no reason at all? You really are such a piece of... Dog crap. Think about it. Maybe it's because you've always hated her so much for no reason that I've wanted to talk to her more and more. Always blaming others, just like a five-year-old would do. Had there been no plans between us and about 50 other people yesterday, I would have probably forgiven you for going out to see her. But yesterday was a day that was meant to be about you and I that should only ever happen once and you blew it off for her. I've already told you why her and I aren't on the best of terms, even if she isn't willing to agree with that. But here I go again. The reason why I do not like her and wanted you to stay away from her is because she was my high school bully. To the point that I have nightmares about her sometimes and cry when I think about all she did to torture me. Just mentioning her name makes me get all nervous and worried. Yet you would always be texting with her or calling with her and going out to see her. And each and every one of those times, I'd die a little more on the inside because I'd have to relive all those bad memories. None of that is anything I care to care about. You really are such a rude bitch letting yourself be held back by the past like that. You must have no idea what it's like to be bullied then. I told you about this crap the moment I found out that you had been going out with her before, Eric. I told you that I never wanted you meeting with her again. That's it. You told me then that you understood my feelings and promised not to talk with or see her anymore. Yet time and time again, you do things like this. Why was it so hard for you to listen to what your girlfriend, your fiance, your bride was saying? All this babbling is starting to drive me nuts. Now that I think back on all of that, I'm happy we're done with now. I still have Skylar after all. She's told me that having me in her life still makes her feel relieved and it does the same for me. So I'm gonna get back with her and we'll get married. I always did find her a lot more attractive than you and way better in bed. Your boringness and lack of any good features is why I always talked with her. And since I'm not going to be working for your family's company anymore, there really is no reason for you to be in my life anymore. What are you going on about? That is not happening. What was that? Are you jealous of what I'm saying now? <laughs> no matter what you have to say to me now to try and win me back, I know better and will not chase after that worm again. 
No, that's not what I'm talking about. She has no plans of having you be around her for the rest of your life. Huh? What makes you think you know that? I'm not going to listen to any more of those depressing comments you're trying to keep me around with. <laughs> so you've really been out of the loop all along? I didn't think I had the right to be telling you this, but Skylar has a fiancé. I hear that things picked up really fast between them, and they will be getting married really soon here. Huh? That another of your lame jokes or something? To make this quick, the only reason she would ask you to come out and see her when she needed something is because she still had you on her leash and she knew it. Now you're just making us both look bad with no proof. If that was the case, then why did she still ask me to come out and be with her when she had her fever and not her fiancé? I had a look at her Instagram account when I woke up, and on there she talked about how her fiancé had to leave for a bit on a business trip. That's why she had to end up asking you to go take care of her, because you were the only person she knew who was so desperate for her attention that you'd drop whatever you were doing, no matter how important to be by her. No way. All I had to do was look at what she posted on her story. Yet this whole time, you had no clue she was engaged and had a man she loves. It just cracks me up that you think you could get back with her in a heartbeat. Damn it. Making fun of me like that? Stop it! I'm not making fun of you. I'm just telling you the truth about yourself. Hey, Hallie, you really have no plans of letting me back into your life? I promise to find another job in another field somewhere else. Jesus, no flippin' thanks. Someone like you who couldn't even stay serious with your fiancé would never make it with a wife. No way. G give me a chance to make this up to you. Not happening. Don't you even talk to me anymore, you freak. I don't want anything to do with you anymore, so just go screw yourself or something. I don't know. No way. Hold on a second, Hallie. If you abandon me now, what am I supposed to do? I was planning on using you to find me another job and all. I won't be able to support myself on my own. And you know why that is? Because deep, deep down in the part of your heart that quivers in fear when you think you're being abandoned is this pathetic little man named Eric. And that man never learned how to grow up past elementary school. And that is why he doesn't know how to do anything on his own and why he is afraid of everything, even though he thinks he can act all tough. So guess what? The only thing that is left in this world for that small, pathetic man hiding inside your heart is self-induced failure. So enjoy it. Goodbye. Hallie! What am I going to do now? <laughs> I've finally finished filling out all of that paperwork, and now there's a restraining order that means Eric will no longer be allowed within 500 feet of our family. As long as you're home with your mother and I, you will never have to worry about him. Thank you so much for doing that, Dad. I was really getting fed up with all the texts he kept sending me, so I just went and blocked him as well as all of his social media accounts. With that, there's no way he'll be able to get inside my head while I'm home. Sorry that you had to fill out so much paperwork, though. I should be the one apologizing to you right now. When you first brought that boy home to show him to us, I should have stepped in as your father and stopped things right then and there. Then none of this fiasco would have had to happen and we could all be enjoying something else. You would have never been scarred by him either. There's no reason for you to be apologizing to me like that. This all started because I didn't judge him well enough before letting him be my boyfriend. My fiancé, even. That's because he was decent at hiding his red flags from you, and you wanted to help him and his family out. For a while there, there was no helping the love that you formed. But I really should have stopped things then when I realized things were very odd about the kid. But... This time, you stepped in and did all sorts of things for me to make sure I escaped with little to no harm, right? That was more than enough for me, Dad. Sure, I may have had to endure being belittled by him again, but at least this time we showed him that my family and I were not to be messed with. And that's what he'd better think for the rest of his life. 
So this next time that I find someone that I want to marry, I'll make sure to run him by you first to see if he really cares about me or not. Considering that there was a lot riding on this wedding of Eric and I, his family all went and cut ties to him, realizing he'd be the cause of their business's downfall. Having lost pretty much everyone he would have relied on for help, Eric was forced into a very tough situation, and soon he couldn't even reach out to anyone anymore as lots of people blocked him. Weeks have gone by since that crazy event took place, and there are still times where I'll think about both Eric and Skylar. But whenever I zone out at work, being reminded of them, I realize that I have things I need to stay busy with right in front of me, and that really helps me forget. And one day it seems that a man in my department noticed me zoning out and came over to ask me what was up before following that up with an invite to dinner. Anyway, the thought of going out to dinner with a handsome man like him soon has completely erased any thought of those two idiots for the time being.